We're glad you're with us here on the program today. This is the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak, and it's always a pleasure to sit alongside financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. We have a great program for you today. We want to tell you throughout the show, and we'll be giving you details on how you can get registered for the Retirement Education Foundation's courses. And these are deep dives into the topic of retirement planning. And I'm sure if you listen to our show, you know retirement planning has evolved over the years. You need to know a lot to retire successfully. So the foundation has made it easy for you to get in the know, to gain more confidence. If you'd like to learn more about these courses, you are welcome to visit the website, retirementplanningedu.org. And the phone number is 800 240 8981. We're going to kick things off here with Kirk and Paul. And, you know, we are all human and we talk about finances here on the program and our savings and retirement. But at the end of the day, Kirk and Paul, we really are emotional creatures. It's hard to separate sometimes our finances from our behaviors, isn't it? It is. And I, I, I'll tell you that, you know, we've been teaching our courses at the uh, at all the universities for over 10 years now. And I, I think, Paul, this is at the, at, the, at the core of why we started teaching these classes was when we recognized that people struggled to manage their emotions in retirement differently than when they were accumulating their wealth while they were working, and that people weren't aware enough and insightful enough with their own emotions to recognize this was going to be their challenge. Their challenge wasn't going to be um, uh, the financial mistake of outliving their money because their fears won't allow them to outlive their money. It's total anxiety. Your relationship with money totally evolves and changes. Really, candidly, this is this. I learned much of this from Paul, right? Paul joined the practice a number of years ago, and Paul's background he, he uh, he's a psych- clinical psychologist. He was a clinical of direct clinical director of mental health for a very loud large county. And, and has extensive studying in human behavior, particularly on the uh, elderly side as people age. This is this is his core competency. And it was Paul who explained to me how the relationship with uh, your money evolves as you get older. And I didn't really connect the dots early in my career until Paul started explaining. Because, look, think about this. When you're working, because he, he, I, I would... Paul, I would consistently hear people say to me that I did not panic during the last crisis, whether it was the dot-com crisis, the 2008 crisis, and, and Paul helped to explain to me why people didn't panic. It's pretty simple why people didn't panic, not just because they were sophisticated investors and, they, and they're smart and highly intelligent. It was because somebody else was paying them a paycheck every single month so they could pay their bills. So the anxiety of not being able to survive and pay their bills wasn't, wasn't an issue. But once you retire, Paul explained to me that your relationship with money totally evolves where you have to pay yourself. There's no one else paying you a paycheck, Paul. Right. Right. No, it's, I, 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 we, we joke a lot about this, but, but it really is fascinating when you watch people over their lifetime and you, and you see people when they're working and, and, they're, and, and they're, they're, they're able to make objective decisions because, because they're getting a paycheck. And then what happens to them once they retire and they don't get this paycheck? It is sort of amazing what happens emotionally, behaviorally, mentally, and, and, but no one believes it, right? Everybody really believes, most people believe that they're going to be able to be objective and make objective decisions just like they did when they were working. And we've seen it. How many times have we met people who made, who made mistakes in retirement because of all the things we're going to talk about today, the, the, you know, their own emotions. And if you're listening, trust me, it's very different, right? It's very different when you retire and you're not getting a paycheck and you're paying yourself. Your emotional world will change dramatically. Yeah, Paul. And we're going to talk about because the strategies they've been using their whole life, they think that's going to work in retirement and they'll be okay is not going to work. And it's why we teach our eight hour classes at all the major universities. We also stream it from the universities because of COVID if people are afraid to be able to attend one of these courses. All you have to do is make a twenty nine dollar donation to charity and go to retirement planning edu dot org retirement planning edu dot org to register. You know, Kirk, when I think about the people who, who I, I think we, we, we are most concerned about, and, and it's the hardest to watch, are the spouses 
of those people who are do-it-yourselfers, who, because they can see their spouses making decisions that are not necessarily the right decisions, but this is so personal. This becomes so emotional. People get so defensive that, you know, these, the spouses don't know what to do. And they're watching their, their, their husband or wife make decisions out of fear or greed or all the things we're going to talk about, and they can't stop them. And they're, you know, they're older and they're looking at their lives and they're afraid of what it's going to mean for them. And those are the people I really, I, I feel for. I mean, I really, I feel for, for those spouses because it's, it's a difficult position to be in. It is, Paul. And so, the, so look, over the years, the course has evolved. It's become an advanced retirement planning course because the guiltiest of struggling emotionally and allowing money to serve them in that evolution of that relationship with their money needs to change. The, the, the one that's guiltiest is the most su- successful people. The ones that have the greatest amount of resources who saved. Look, it wasn't that hard. Honestly, I won't say it wasn't that hard. It was hard to save a lot of money. And it was not easy to buy investments and not panic and hold. I, I, I'll say that it wasn't easy. I, I, I'll agree with that. But there was only two levers. And motions didn't play nearly the amount of role in this that they will similar to what they'll confront in retirement. It, it's just a fact. Our fear, Paul, we talk about this all the time. Our, our concern for the people who are attending our courses are not whether they outlive their money. It's they're going to underspend what they otherwise could spend because of fear and anxiety in this relationship with money. So, and, and, and maybe it's not 100% that way. There is the segment of people that never stop serving money and greed gets in the way and they make stupid mistakes. They've already won the marathon, but some reason they're going to go re-run the marathon. We'll cover all this today. And I'm really excited because I, I hope people listen. I, I know for a lot of do-it-yourselfers, this, the, the psychology of this may not be exciting, but I'm going to tell you, this is what you, this is going to be you guys. And all of us are guilty of a, many of these behaviors. And if you listen, it can help a lot. So We're going to encourage you to register for one of our eight-hour courses we teach at University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Oakland University. We teach at just about every university now, right? And we're streaming it live from the universities if you want to stay in your own home. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or call 800 240-8981. And we're back with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Back with Kirk and Paul. This is the Retirement Education Hour. Of course, Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, they are Retirement Education Foundation instructors. They're financial instructors, and they can help you get one step closer to your ideal retirement when you register for one of their upcoming courses. Now, these courses are a deep dive into retirement planning, and they're held at local universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University. Two-day course or a one-day intensive course. And you can register today. Just go to retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Kirk and Paul, I should also mention, you can attend From the comfort of your own home. That's right. There's a virtual option as well. So be sure to visit that website or call that phone number. On the show today, your behaviors, your emotions, how does that impact your view of finances? You know, when we go through all these different behaviors, you talk about money, Kirk and Paul, you have to talk about greed, right? Because sometimes that can be a natural human emotion. How do we temper that? Well, you know, it it was Warren Buffett, and we're going to quote him quite a bit today, I think, but it was Warren Buffett who said, you have to be insane to risk what you have for something you don't need. In other words, if you have what you need to give you what you want, if you already have what you need to give you everything you want in retirement, the only purpose of maintaining the same amount of risk in, in stretching for returns is either greed or being unaware of what you have and what it will provide for you. And so so sometimes when something looks like greed, Paul, it isn't greed. It, it, sometimes it's they just don't, they're not aware of what their money can provide for and do for them because they're still believing this stupid 4% rule. Now, for, let me just tell you right now, the 4% rule is doesn't work. 
it's a the, the one size fits all lazy way of retirement planning that our industry created so they can sell a lot of stuff and meet as many people as they can and be as transactional as they can. It, it's a silly way to retirement plan. Factually, Paul, in our private practice, people in their mid 60s, we're pulling out seven, eight percent a year with zero chance of outliving their income. Zero chance, right? So there is a way to create a, a greater percentage of an income stream, right? So when they when someone doesn't know that, sometimes what appears to be greed, Paul, is really just a lack of of understanding what the money can do for them because they've they've been following the general rules of thumb of our industry. Yeah, and I think you're right, although I think you're letting people off the hook a little I bit. Am. I'm sorry. So at the end of the day, the word greed is synonymous with bad images. Like we don't like to, we're, it's a horrible word, right? It brings up images of people in our history that are really bad people. No one ever wants to admit that they're greedy, but here's the reality. I mean, there's a continuum of greed, right? There's a continuum. But anybody out there who's taking unnecessary risk and they know they're taking unnecessary risk at a time, as you said, have already won the marathon. Any, anyone who's listening who has enough money and continues to take unnecessary risk, I'm sorry to say, greed is a part of it. It may not be all of it. It's a part of it. And that doesn't mean you're a bad person. That doesn't mean you're evil. But greed is, is a human emotion that we, we all struggle with. And you're letting greed get in the way if you're taking risks you don't need. And, and the problem is, you know, when you say that to people, they get very defensive. Sure right. If you do. ever say no one likes to admit it, but but it's 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 a huge factor in 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 decisions people make in retirement, and it's something that if you can't control, will get you in trouble. Well, I think education can help them a Completely. tremendous amount to recognize that it is a behavior. Because candidly, Paul, when they were accumulating their wealth when they were young, being greedy wasn't a bad thing for their own savings. Right? I'm sure. going to be greedy and save money. I'm going to serve my money and accumulate as much as I can and be greedy. And guess what? I'm going to take excessive risk because I'm greedy. That's okay to be greedy when you're young because you have time. But your relationship with money has to evolve from serving money to recognizing that that ship has sailed. Now you've got to let, you've got to have that money serve you. Greedy being greedy is just going to get you in trouble. Trouble in ways that you aren't even familiar with yet because you don't understand something called sequence of return risk. Greed gets people in horrible trouble in retirement. And by the way, you're just not hurting yourself. You're hurting a spouse that's depending on you and has trusted you your whole lives to guide you, right? You have a responsibility to that spouse. They gave you the, they gave you the, 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 the keys to the ship. They gave you the steering wheel. Now, you've got to not... Put that person in a vulnerable position because often this generation, the baby boomer generation, it was the men, right? And the men are going to die first. So you're going to leave. This greed is going to cause unnecessary harm to a spouse that has trusted you your whole life. Yeah, you know, I, you, you, we love quoting Warren Buffett, don't, don't yes. we? Right? I mean, pretty amazing man, right? Warren Buffett said, be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. And you know what? I, it's so true. If you if you're noticing people being greedy, that's the time, right, to be fearful. And and you know the dot com crisis was a perfect example where he 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 he's a he's a brilliant man, right? It's sure. A, and he 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 controls his emotions in a way that most people can't. And he did what everybody else wasn't doing, and he, he got the last laugh, right? So I think it is important that. If you're noticing everybody being greedy, maybe that's the time to say, hey, maybe, maybe I better take a step back a little bit. Paul, we, we see this, you know, gold commercials. It, it, anything Perfect. new, when you start seeing everyone on, you see radio commercials, TV commercials promoting these trading strategies, get rich quick strategies, these 17% returns on this real estate invest. When you're starting to see more of something that's out there and being sold and promoted is usually the time. To be afraid. To be afraid. When yeah. your Uber driver is giving you stock tips or your plumber is giving you stock tips is probably the time that you need to back off a little bit, right? Great point. That's a so, great point. So, and, and I would say we might be losing sight a little bit. 
when you get close to retirement, within five to 10 years of retirement, you need to begin to understand what your money can provide for you because your risk needs to be driven based upon your needs and your wants. What do I need to give me what I want? That is what drives your risk, not what the book says for a 60-year-old or a 55-year-old. Those books were designed for an average baby boomer who will retire with $200,000 saved. Many of you listening have a lot more than $200,000 saved for retirement. Those books don't apply to you. Those rules don't apply to you. And that's what we teach in the class. In eight hours, we spend eight hours teaching you how to understand all the different levers that are available to you to use in retirement and how to learn to let money serve you, right? So all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. You can register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org edu.org or call 800-240-8981. And there's much more with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler straight ahead. Here with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. We're glad you're with us on the show today. Have you registered yet for the foundation's courses? Remember, these are courses that are taught at local universities right here in our community. You also have the option to attend in the comfort of your own home. There's a virtual option as well. I want to give you the phone number and the website, two easy ways to register, 800-240-8981. And that website is retirementplanningedu.org. So you think that your finances are separate from your emotions, your behaviors. Well, Kirk and Paul are pulling back the curtain on that, and they say, not so fast. We are human, and we do have emotions, and we have feelings around our finances, and those could impact some of the moves we make as we get close to retirement. You know, we've heard a lot about fear in the past, right, with this pandemic, and I think fear may be at an all-time high, Kirk and Paul, but you say we really need to get a handle on this particular human emotion because it can have some detrimental impacts to our finances. How so? Well, this is the emotion I'm most concerned with and we see most frequently, right? Thousands of people come through our classes, Paul. Thousands, right? Right. And they tend to have a lot of resources. We attend to attract people that have quite a bit of, they've saved a lot of money for retirement. They tend to be highly educated, you know, engineers, faculty, executives, CPAs, attorneys, highly educated people. And so they underestimate many of these highly intelligent, highly successful people because of their success, underestimate how much fear will drive what happens in their retirement, right? With fear, you can't have freedom, truly. And you spent 30 to 40 years to serve money, accumulate your wealth, and did a terrific job in theory to be able to to have the freedom to do the things that you wanted to do in retirement. It's sort of the reward for all your hard work your whole life. You get to now spend at least the first 10 to 15 years of retirement being active, doing things, traveling, doing the bucket list, being rewarded for that hard work. And what we see more often than not, Paul, is people not taking advantage, allowing fear. And, and, and the fear causes this. The fear causes you to way underlive what you otherwise could be spending in retirement. People have no concept. Just think about what the value of your retirement accounts will be when you're 80 years old. Let's say it's $2 million. I'm going to tell you right now, if it's $2 million, you're going to have to take out $120,000 just from your retirement accounts in forced required minimum distributions, plus your Social Security, plus your pensions. Many of you guys are living on 3 4% in your 60s. And you shouldn't be. You don't need to be. It's a mistake. You're way under living what you could be living because of fear. Many of you are protecting your principal because that's what you've been conditioned to believe you should do. You don't want, do you want the same amount of money that you retire with be there when you die for your kids? If you do, that's fine, Paul, right? That's fine. But if, if, how about a controlled spend down of your principal? That's okay. Just don't let me outlive my income. That's, that makes sense, right, Paul? It does. You know, Fear is a funny, t- funny issue because as we all age, anxiety and fear naturally creep into our lives, right? As we age, we start having health issues and we watch people that we know are dying and getting sick, right? It's somewhat a normal, it's hard not to have anxiety and fear 
creep in our lives as we age. And, and of course, we're talking about people who are aging in retirement. The challenge, though, to me, the thing I see a lot that really worries me is when fear and anxiety immobilize people, right? It, it, you know, when fear and anxiety make you helpless to a point where you can't make any decision, so you make no decisions. I, we meet a lot of people who, who know they need to do some things in retirement but can't make a decision because fear immobilizes them. It, it, and, and as a result, they make no decisions. And when you make no decisions, that's a decision as well, right? So it, when fear gets, you know, gets, gets to a point where you are unable to do the things you need to do, I, I mean, how many people have we met that have stayed with their old advisor yep. because of fear or conversely have been doing it themselves but won't hire someone to help them because of fear, right? It, 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 I'm sorry to say, at some point, you're going to need help, right? At some it point, you're going to need help. It is ridiculous that people, I, you're not going to like this. I mean, look, we're going to spend eight hours in a class and teach you. And if you, if you still, after eight hours, think you can do this yourself when there's literally 25, 30 levers you need to consider pulling, that's fine. But y- you're fooling yourself. Look, there's a reason why when you're 65 years old, you no longer can fly. You can over, no longer fly a plane if you're a pilot. There's a reason why they ask you to retire. You have to get out of your profession. Your skill sets diminish. Mathematically, things are going to get more difficult as you age. You're not as sharp. And you're going to allow your financial health, yourself, who's going to deteriorate slowly, but you, 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 you're you confident enough that you're going to be able to handle this in the most vulnerable times in your life when you don't have a job, no one else is paying you anything, and this has got to survive you and your spouse? That is – and, and it's it, – they don't think they can do it better. They're just fearful and don't know who to trust or what to trust. That's the purpose that's, of the eight hours of class, right? Yeah, no, Look, that's, folks, you need to understand in retirement, you're going to have four to seven major market events or life events. We're going to have recessions. We could have a depression. Who knows? We're going to have different elections that you're not going to like. Who's being elected or who's being peached? It's going to give you fear. You think the world's going to end. Irrational thoughts, particularly when we get older. Everything gets more exaggerated, and so does our personalities. And so does, as Paul says, fear and anxiety. You have to understand all the levers that are available for you to pull And when you need to pull those levers, where do I go during different market events so that you don't allow these short-term market events and life events to stop stop you? Like, you can't allow a short-term market event to change your lifestyle or your spending. That's not freedom. That's not what you work 30 to 40 years for. That can't be your reward. We're in a recession for three years, so I'm not going to spend. I don't like who's being elected, so I'm going to stop spending and hope I live and healthy after this is all done. That isn't freedom. And and, and, and I'm just going to say, and and the best, the best antidote to to this is is education, right? I mean, I mean, there is a reason why we teach the course. It's not an accident, right? The saying knowledge is power. The reason why knowledge is power is it it allows you to make objective decisions not subjective or emotional decisions, right? That's why we started teaching the class. Paul, if it was if it was simple, it wouldn't be eight hours. It would be the stupid hour dinner seminars where someone's selling you something. Right. This is an eight-hour, 200-page textbook of advanced retirement planning. And all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. It's a donation to charity. That's all you have to do to register or learn more about the courses. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. And we'll be back with Kirk and Paul straight after this. Always a pleasure to be alongside Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. This, of course, the Retirement Education Hour. And we're glad you're along with us here on the program. If you haven't gotten registered yet for the courses that the foundation sponsors here in our community, want to make sure you have the website and the phone number to do that today. Retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. If you think that you can separate your emotions and your behaviors from the world of finance, Kirk and Paul are here to tell you that's a little bit hard to do. In fact, it's easier said than done in a lot of cases. We were talking about fear earlier. Kirk and Paul, you say that fear can be a driver. It's sometimes a motivator in the way we think about our finances. Tell us more about that. 
Well, I, you know, and we we spent the last segment talking about fear. I feel like, Paul, we are rushing in so many things that we need to talk about in these short little segments. It's why people should come to – we're at every university. There's no excuse to come one of, to one of these courses, these eight-hour courses. But the one that I see a lot, Paul, especially when we're teaching the classes, is that this – the preference. The, the, they call it a preference, but it's a fear, right? But it's the preference to try to avoid losses rather than making money. And it, it, it's sort of silly. People really think that they can stock pick or market time. They can sense what's going to happen in the markets. Their research can tell them what's going on. Look, at the end of the day, it's fear. And it's simple as this, Paul. I, I give you this number. If people miss 30 of the best days in the market over the last 20 years, if they were in cash for 30 days, 30 of the best days over a 20-year period, they had a, they'd have a negative return today. A negative return today. It's incredible. I mean, it's it's, it's astonishing number. So, so what's the answer? Some people say, well, I'm going to leave more in cash. Well, right now, your cash in the bank is losing you 6% this year because that's where inflation's at. Cash is not going to be the answer in retirement. It can be. It certainly can be if you want to live on a really low distribution rate, live in fear, and underspend what you otherwise can be spending. Look, what you invest in and when you invest in it isn't going to drive your performance in retirement, period. People don't believe us because this is all you, everyone in our industry has told you. But in retirement, what will drive your performance is what accounts that you pull the money from during what market events. It's having the right levers to pull during all the different events that are going to occur throughout retirement. They're going to happen. So if you know these events are going to happen and you know the levers, the accounts to have ready to pull when the, these events happen, you can have a retirement pulling out six, seven, eight percent a year with freedom, no fear. Yeah. You said this earlier, right? Fear really is pervasive in so many of the things that interfere with making good decision retirement. You mentioned fear and how fear drives avoidance and avoiding making mistakes. I'll tell you another, I, I think we could spend a whole show on it is how fear and anxiety drive the need to control when you don't have control, right? Here's the thing is we all age, we are losing control, right? I mean, actually controls, no one, none of us really have control, but as we don't age- Don't get too deep in okay, this I, I was going to get into this too much, but- No, no, go, I'm just no, kidding. No, go ahead. Say, as we age, right? We know this, as we age, we all are slowly feeling we're losing control, right? We're not as sharp. Our eyesight isn't good. Our hearing isn't good. We're losing friends. Medically, things are falling, you know, aren't, aren't the same- and, and, and naturally, that creates a lot of fear. So we want to control as much as we can control. And what we find, Kirk, all the time in meeting people is the one thing that people feel they can control is their money. They, when they don't have control over anything else, right? Mortality is something we face as we age. But the one thing we can control is our money. And that's what people focus on is controlling money. Sadly, though, that's what gets us into trouble, controlling our finances when, when we shouldn't be. And we should let other people help us. Well, and, and it, to be fair, Paul, I want to be clear. Our courses are held by a nonprofit organization, a foundation. That's who sponsors the eight-hour educational courses. So when we tell you you're going to need help, this isn't out of self-motivation. This is, this is our experience data, and we know what's going to happen. We, we know the mistakes. We know the elder abuse. We know the traps. We've done this thousands and thousands of times, right? So one of the things we're going to teach in the class, Paul, right, is we teach, we spend quite a bit of time, is how do you find the right type of an advisor to help you? How do you do background checks? How do you do understand how they get paid? How to find the least expensive people to give you the best value? How do you know if they are skilled in specifically retirement planning, income planning, tax planning? That's the purpose of the class. It's, it's to show you all the levers that are available so that you can uh, filter out those people who are creating a perception that isn't reality, lying to you, that isn't really there to provide you the services, the kinds of services you need. You are not the average retiree. If you have saved more than $200,000 for retirement, you are not the average retiree. That's, the average retiree has only saved $200,000 for retirement. So if you have a million, two, three, four million, what you're going to get is cookie cutter, one size fits solutions. 
that's part of the course is to teach you what you should be looking for to help you find the right people to with that, Paul. I'm, I mean, again, that will help you with your fear because you're now knowledgeable and educated. You might not, sorry, Paul, you might not be able to do it yourself, but you're at least going to know the levers and the things you should be looking for and the right questions to ask. I mean, again, though, I mean, it goes back to knowledge is power, right? Part of the course is teaching people how to find the right advisor. If you have the information that will help you figure out who you should work with and who you shouldn't, then, then that will help you overcome that fear that, that's going to interfere with making good decision. Knowledge is power. If you learn and you have information, you can make better decisions. We spend an hour talking about how to pick an advisor. That's going to help you make the right decision. 100%. The other one, Paul, and I know we're running out of time this segment, is this herd mentality. That's part of, that's fear, right? Because I feel more comfortable if everyone else is doing this, Yes. right? So, totally. because I'm, I'm, I'm fearful. So let me, I'm not going to go out on a ledge and try something different. Everyone else is doing this. So let me do it. That's a herd mentality. Everyone says I should do this. Remember, I keep telling you what everyone is doing is what's being told to the average retiree. You're not average. You shouldn't be doing what the average person is doing. You have different resources, different levers that need to be pulled, different planning needs. So don't be part of the herd. The general rules of thumb, the conventional wisdom does not fit you. So i sorry, I got on a soapbox here. But this is why we teach these eight-hour courses, and we're in all the universities. It's not an accident. We teach at the University of Michigan. Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, the Novi campus, and the Troy campus, Oakland University, we also have a learning center in Livonia, and all of these courses while we're teaching at the universities, we are streaming it. So if you feel more comfortable at home, you can take it at home. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800 800- Two four zero eight nine eight one. There is much more with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler straight ahead. We're glad you're aboard on the show today. This is the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak here with financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. Have you registered yet for their courses? These are courses that are held throughout our community during the year, either in person or virtually. And you can get registered today. Go to retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Well, we're all human. We're all emotional creatures. And that means those emotions and behaviors can influence our financial decisions. Kirk and Paul are walking us through the pros and cons of that. You know, when you think about confidence, I think about that song, What's Wrong With Being Confident, right? And I think a lot of people would say nothing. But the two of you say, wait, hold on a minute. We've got to talk about overconfidence. When that comes into play, that can spell danger. Talk about that. Well, look, you know, you're, you're, we're talking about a, a, a generation, the baby boomer generation, who has been the most financially successful generation ever, right? $76 trillion will pass from the baby boomers down to their children. $76 trillion. It's a huge, massive number. They have been hugely s- successful. It, it's been remarkable, right? And, and here's the thing. With, when you're successful at something, you tend to get overconfident. And we see this so frequently when it comes to the managing of our own money. Look, here's the reality. Everyone's made money the last 10 years. You're not that good. In fact, I'm willing to bet you've taken more risk than you needed to get the return you've received. You could have thrown a dart at the wall and made money. But because things have been so great and everybody's making money, everyone's overconfident. You got to recognize and you need to be careful to accumulate wealth. There's two levers. There's the savings levers. You got to be disciplined to save. And then there's, I got to invest and not sell. I have to invest the money and not panic and leave it invested. Those are the two levers you can pull. Retirement is so many more levers. There's so many more things you need to pull. Taxes. Folks, taxes is going to be the second largest expense you're going to confront in retirement, period. And there's so many ways to save. We teach people how to save three to $500,000 throughout the retirement in taxes just by knowing when and how to take income from which buckets. That extends the life of their money, right? There's income, knowing when to take income from which investments because if you take it from the wrong ones, 
early in retirement, your chances of outliving your money increase by 75%. This overconfidence going into an, a period of your life where you're going to lose things, cognitive abilities, your skill sets, your sharpness. People are making mistakes because they are so overconfident. Yeah, you know, I, I think part of what- makes- A little dramatic, but seriously, honestly, it's really hard to watch. I, mean, I, I think part of the challenge that we have is that the people that come to our classes or typically people who are listening to the show have been successful in their lives. And, and, and meaning they, 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 you know, professionally they've done well. They were smart in their own professions, right? They, they specialized in areas and they were well known in their areas. I mean, we have a lot of clients, right? Who, who are, you know, great surgeons and, you know, great CEOs who've been successful in their lives, who think because they've been successful in their professions means they're going to be, you know, successful in, in in their retirement and managing their finances in the distribution of in their the dis- wealth. That's right, and, and 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 that that's in some ways it's almost like a. I mean, it's, it 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 doesn't mean you, it, we're not saying that you aren't smart, right? We're not saying you weren't successful. What we're saying is just because you were successful in one area of your life doesn't mean you're going to be successful in this. You may be an, an amazing, you know, CEO. It doesn't mean you're going to do surgery, right? It doesn't mean you're going <laughs> right. to do surgery, right? You got to know, you got to know your limits and it's, and and it's hard for us to know our limits and people always tend to think they can do more, especially men. Sorry to say we, we tend to be overconfident and this is when people get into trouble. So, so I, and I think that's, that's part of the problem is, is the people we attract, right? We attract really smart people in our classes. Yes. Right. It's the Dunning Kruger effect. It is. Right. So talk about that study. Well, well, first explain the Dunning Kruger and then I'll explain the study. So Dunning-Kruger's essentially, Google it. Everyone Google the Dunning-Kruger effect. We all believe that we are more capable or smarter at something than we, we typically are. And it's, it's particularly in finance, right? If you do something and you do it well early, you all of a sudden think you're an expert. And then there's this whole different emotional roller coaster. You, you, you fall down. And that's where the mistakes happen is when you start to have – a deficiency you make a mistake then you lose your confidence totally and then you have mistakes this is when we panic when we sell 35 percent of people over the age of 65 paul panicked during march of covid right 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 so paul it's what is it the john uh, jonathan burton yeah he, he did a study and wrote about it in, in his book called investment Tit- uh, titans and basically he asked participants if they thought they were average or better than average in a variety of categories. And one was driving, which is sort of a funny thing, right? And, and the other was getting along with people, right? 90% of the people, 90% of the people said they were better than average in driving and get along. Well, how could that even be possible, right? <laughs> it's not even possible, right? We all tend to overestimate our abilities. And that's fine if it's about driving. It's fine if you want to overestimate your your abilities when it when it comes to getting along with people. It is not fine to do this in this phase of your life, right? There's not a lot of room for error, There's Kirk, no right? Room. There's really, right, a little mistake. I mean, I, I, a little mistake can cost you, I think of a person I met where lost a million dollars because he was buying options, but when I met him, he told me he figured out the system. He finally figured out the secret sauce and wanted to keep doing it. I mean, it's craziness, but people who are, people continue to think they can do things and they and and, and and if they make a mistake there's no going back there's no do over well, 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 let's do this why are we even doing half of the things they're doing because here's the deal we said it early first segment of the show you have to be insane to risk what you have for something you don't need so why if you have what you need to give you what you want for the rest of your life it, it, it's almost like this guys it's almost like I've won the marathon but I I, I and I, I won, but I want to have a better time. I want to win by even further. So let's go rerun. Let's go back 10 miles, and I'll rerun the last 10 miles to see if I can do even better. By the way, it, who cares if I twist an ankle, pull a hamstring, tear a knee, and not finish at all? That's what a lot of people are doing because they're overconfident. You have what you need to give you what you want. Spend eight hours. Most of you have it. You've won. You just don't even know you've won. Just spend eight hours in a course at one of the universities, you, or you can stay in your home or streaming it. It's an eight-hour course. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. 
If you'd like to register or learn more about the classes, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Back with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Here with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. Thanks for joining us here on the show today. This is the Retirement Education Hour. And Kirk and Paul, as we've been talking about human behavior and emotion around finances, I have learned a lot. We want to get into how we take some of what we've learned today and apply it to real planning for retirement. I want to make sure, though, people have your phone number and also have the website so that they can get registered for the Retirement Education Foundation's courses. And these are courses taught throughout the year. We encourage you, go online, find the date and the location that works best for you, and get up to speed on everything you need to know to plan for a successful retirement. Here's that website, retirementplanningedu.org, or you can call 800-240-8981. Kirk and Paul, understanding our emotions so key to having success with our finances, especially as we head into retirement, It all comes down to having a plan, though, one that we do feel confident in. Where do we start on that? Well, you start by understanding what is a plan and what's not a plan. And one of the more frustrating things for the financial instructors at the foundation, including Paul and I, and there's others, but including Paul and I, is people often come to our classes, and we've done it over 10 years, thousands of people, believing they have a retirement plan. And only about 4% of people have a retirement plan. Look, a pie chart showing an asset allocation is not a plan. A dial that shows you the probability of whether or not you outlive your money is not a plan. An 80-page report with a bunch of wonderful graphs and charts that you don't understand isn't a plan. A spreadsheet that just takes 4% a year out of your account is not a plan. A real retirement plan is going to show you 30 years of where and when you should take money from which investments, and it will have investments that you can pivot to, right? That you can pull a different lever, pivot to a different account when we have a recession versus when the market is rallying like it's been. We should be taking money from a different source. Every market event should drive a different place to take your money, This is what's going to drive your performance. It's not the average returns, I'm telling you, because you're pulling money out of your accounts. And when you're pulling money out of your accounts and the money is going down, you are locking in those losses and you can't recover from it. So more important than average returns is having different buckets of money to pull from at different market events. Paul, a plan also includes tax planning. We teach in the class 30 years how to project your taxes for 30 years and then run hundreds of iterations to work backwards to find the most efficient path. Should I be Roth converting in my 60s, spending my taxable accounts first so I can reduce the amount of required minimum distributions I have to take in my 70s and 80s? And if I do that, a lesser percentage of my Social Security is going to be taxable. My dividends and uh, long-term capital gains could may not be taxable either. So Knowing when and how to take income from which accounts minimizing taxes, saving three to five hundred thousand dollars in taxes over your lifetime, that's a plan. Paul, what else is a plan? Well, can I just say one thing, please? Because you do you're doing a great job. I don't want you I don't want you to stop. You're on a yep. run here. Yep. But I I just want to interject one thing. I, you know, we talk about the benefits of planning all the time. I think this show today it really highlights why planning is the most important because the best way to manage these emotions, the best way to manage your fear and anxiety and need for control or, or overconfidence or greed or all the things we talked about, the best way to keep those things in check is to plan, right? A plan will keep it all in check because a plan lays things out in the future, whether it's tax planning or income planning or legacy planning. How do we make sure your surviving spouse okay, right? All those things, if they're laid out in a real plan, Yeah. Right. And a real plan, the things we're talking about, these behaviors will not undermine the success of your of your future retirement. And that's why you're going to and at the end, you'll live the life you want to live. Right. I just want to say I 100 percent agree so much that go to go to the retirement planning edu dot org's website and watch the webinar on a retirement plan. You'll see what a retirement plan looks like. Just look at what a retirement plan looks like. Do yourself that at minimum. If you're not going to come to the class, at least go watch that. I think it's a 40-minute webinar. It walks through what a retirement plan is. 
what it should look like, what it should have, so you understand what we mean by if you have a real plan that gives you the ability to pivot no matter what the market or life events that are occurring, as long as you have places to go and you understand that you have places to go and then it's fully summarized, not just spreadsheets, but it's written out account by account what's going to happen if you have a long-term care event, where do you go when one spouse predeceases the other spouse? How do I protect that surviving spouse who has less income and pays a lot more taxes and Medicare's go up? How do we protect all of these things? Then you will have the freedom to spend. Spend like you should spend in retirement, not underspend. And without a plan, you're going to underspend what you otherwise could be spending. Like I said, Paul and I's fear is not you outliving your money. It's you way underliving what you otherwise could be living on. You could spend so much more. So you 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 went you said one thing that I want to go back to real quickly the surviving spouse yeah it's right? a big deal right. we didn't it, cover much it, of it. but 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 that is again going back to how behaviors and emotions impact our planning and, and our retirement again most concerned about the surviving spouse and if you have a real plan that plan is going to outline what that surviving spouse is going to do when their spouse passes away and how we're going to help them manage their taxes and their income. How are we going to make sure that they can, if they have a long-term care event, how they're going to cover that? That surviving spouse is really important. We really need to spend time yes. helping them. And a retirement plan really does that. And we spend time in the class talking about that. Paul, that is going to happen. Someone is going to predecease the other, more than likely, right? And we know that there's problems. You probably don't know the problems, but we know there are pro- there are big problems that happen when that happens. So if we know that an outcome is going to happen and we know there's a problem, there's a way to plan today for that in the future. That helps you feel free to spend more to pro- because you're protecting your surviving spouse. Spend eight hours. Attend a course. If you don't want to come in live in person to one of the universities, that's fine. Stream it from your home. Check out the website. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. You can go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Investment advisory services are offered by Strategic Investment Advisors, Inc., an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.